What is up, everyone? Good morning. My name is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to this brand new JJ's One Man Podcast. I'm feeling good. Hopefully you guys are feeling good as well. I'm recording this on Sunday morning, hence why I say good morning to everybody. Uh, last night, prior to this recording, I was actually watching the big boxing fight that was going on that everybody was checking out, Davis versus Garcia. It was pretty cool. It was a fun thing to have with the family and stuff, but that's not why I'm excited I'm why I'm feeling good this week, because this week is Jedi Survivor Week. You know, it's going down later on this week towards Friday because I got my Star Wars Jedi Survivor on pre-order. I'm ready to go, baby. Cannot wait to play that game. But before we get into the good stuff later this week, let's talk about some nonsense, shall we? As we always do sometimes on this podcast because there's always something to talk about that's going on that's goofy, stupid, silly, or whatever else happening with the games industry. So what am I referring to here? So I want to talk a little bit more generally about a couple different things in relation to the games industry slash gaming industry personnel kind of acting silly over social media, especially within the last like week, I want to say, maybe a little bit less than that give or take a few days but a lot of you out there have probably seen a lot of the stuff and the changes going on with twitter you know with twitter blue all the check marks the verification stuff it's a minefield out here it's absolutely ridiculous it's silly people are wiling out over the most stupidest reasons and the reason why this kind of applies to me and applies to the games industry because you guys know me i hardly ever talk about other stuff outside of games and entertainment i never get into political discussions because i find it to be so divisive and so hostile and volatile for any number of reasons it's just not a good thing to talk about with people because it just divides people over everything but the reason why i'm talking about this now and why it applies to us now in this conversation is because i see a lot of different games industry personnel whether it's media people devs biz dev people uh what is it just pr reps and all all types of individuals all over the games industry in the you know industry side of things outside of just content creators just acting a fool on social media, saying the most outlandish, quote unquote, toxic stuff that I've ever seen in the industry. I'm talking about levels along the same lines of what we saw with Adam Sessler not too long ago. And you guys know about that whole deal. I've talked about it on a previous episode of this podcast. Go check it out. There's a whole playlist, by the way, on the YouTube channel that's just devoted to this podcast that you guys will be able to listen to. It's labeled as podcast because YouTube does that thing now where you could actually set up podcast playlists and every single episode is there, including the one that I'm talking about. But back to the topic on hand, uh, the reason why I say this is because it's along that level of like goofiness and craziness and stupidity, in my personal opinion anyway. Again, far be it from me to judge anybody else when it comes to their opinions, when it comes to their stances or perspective on stuff. I think sometimes that could lead to good conversation, but often, especially on social media as of late within the last couple of years, it's allowed people just to be very vicious and hostile towards everybody for everything. The, the funny thing is that I, I always bring up and I always say to people when we talk about social media is that people need to understand not everybody on social media is trying to troll you. And on top of that, not everybody on social media cares about what's going on with you. They're just minding their own business, doing their own thing. So when people, especially people in the industry that I see, speak in generalizations or paint with very broad brushes against people, it's really crazy and stupid to me. And it's just like poking the bear or just taking jabs at people and poking the hornet's nest just for the sake of doing so. So what's the example that I refer to specifically? Now that I've talked about for like three and a half minutes, circling around the actual thing, right? The big thing that I saw that really kind of, you know, set me off a little bit was this thing that was uh, posted up by Michael Pactor. Anybody who doesn't know, Michael Pactor is like a business analyst. He does a lot of stuff for like MSNBC. He's part of Sifted.net. I've watched Michael Pactor for years, and, and I respect his opinions on some stuff, and then I kind of disregard a lot of his other opinions on many other things, especially when it comes to predictions. He's known and like infamous for making predictions that are outlandish, that never come to pass, but everybody still pays attention to him because he knows a lot about money and stuff, and that's fine, whatever, you know, no problem with him on that. I've even met Michael Pactor at E3 before, you know, he was very nice to me, we didn't have any sort of problem, if anything, a lot of other people around there were kind of kissing his butt because it's him stuff which, you know, it is what it is, but like, I never had an issue with him in the past, but I didn't like one of the things that he actually put out there that I thought was way over crossing the line. And he comes out, it goes on Twitter and says, paying for a blue check mark is like buying a MAGA hat and wearing it. Surprise, people don't get that. So let, let's, let's like take a step back here. You know something, a lot of people, including him, don't seem to understand that a lot of in people in the industry, the games industry specifically, uh, do subscribe to Twitter blue. 
Like I've met people in different parts of the industry that do subscribe to Twitter Blue, not only just for their own personal use, but also for their businesses. Like some of them, either they're indie developers or some of them are part of other big organizations. They want to have the verification check mark, you know, in spite of all the craziness going on with Twitter, you know, because I don't always agree with what's going on with Twitter. I think a lot of it is kind of manufactured most of the time. And a lot of it is just really stupid for the sake of being stupid. But it is what it is. And that's the hand we're dealt with right now. We got to kind of just, you know, navigate through it rather than just complain on the platform. You're going to complain that you're going to leave Twitter on Twitter. Like how stupid is that? But anyway, I digress. When I see a thing like this posted up by Michael Pector, I take a step back and I look at this and I'm like, this is the most ignorant and most stupid, ill-informed and really just nasty comment and, and implication or in, in like, you know, suggestive thing about people, you know, especially in the games industry, you know, Michael Pactor being someone who is in the games industry because of the content that he makes and stuff, he might argue and other people might argue that he's not because he's not a dev or any or a media person per se, like in the same way that I am or many other people are. But he does have a lot of colleagues that are also in the games industry that he associates with, that he also throws, the used to, I should say, doesn't do so anymore, used to throw a party at E3 all the time that people in the games industry wanted to go to because a lot of other industry people used to go to that. So to make a comment like that, you know, I find like is really just ignorant and really just like uncalled for. It's stupid. And it's not just him. I've seen others, which again, you could just go on Twitter and go on other places and see this making along those same type of lines. There's that whole block the blue campaign, which I thought was like, I, I don't understand. Like, what's the point of this? Like, there are some people on Twitter who probably subscribe to Twitter Blue who are not bothering anybody, who are just minding their own business, like I said before, probably subscribe to Blue because they think it's going to push their stuff out there, which apparently it's supposed to do so. That's at least why I started subscribing to it and also the other like capabilities of it and stuff, you know, as social media, but also they're just doing their own thing. Why are you going to make like a, a comment that is kind of like, you know, putting them in this like same type of vicinity of something else that's like very nasty and very hostile or implies something about them that might not if anything straight up not true about them like why is that like i understand he's trying to make a comparison saying that like people are acting like if they're in a cult or they're acting like if they're in like some sort of fanaticism and any sort of like thing like that with twitter you could say the same thing about people that use apple products and i'm pretty sure because i've seen him when i've seen him in person michael pactor use like an iphone or something or like a an ipod or, or whatever else a macbook or something like that you could say the same thing about those same type of people, you know, making a similar argument. But the point is, though, it's still ridiculous in this case because it's trying to say something about people that is like so far in the extreme solely because you want to take a jab at people, solely because you want to provoke people, solely because you want to get attention and get like engagement, you know, with just people just like taking a jab at them. And it's like, come on now. Like, uh, if we're really talking about, including him, by the way, I've seen this a couple of times here and there, as crazy as Michael Pactor can be at times, but I've seen him and a lot of other people he's associated with constantly talking about making our industry better for people, making it more welcoming, making it a little bit more friendly and open and, and a lot more diverse and stuff. And that's not how you do it. You know, have whatever opinion that you want. That's fine. Nobody cares if you have an opinion. Like, people will listen and stuff, but they don't care that you're out here expressing yourself. That's fine. But when you're coming out and saying one thing, but then your actions are taking the complete opposite of that, that's a problem. That's stupid. That's dumb. That's counterproductive to a lot of the stuff that you claim to stand for, let alone other people claim to stand for. And the other thing that I can't understand, and I said this about Adam Sessler a while, a while back and, and a few other people, is why is it that a lot of our colleagues don't call this stuff out? Don't actually question this. Like, what is it? Like, either you don't want to rock the boat, you're worried about, like, not getting certain business opportunities, you're worried about certain people judging you or ostracizing you and making you uh, fall into peer pressure and all this other stuff. Like, why is that? Like some of these people go on social media and say like the most craziest things, the most nasty things and the most hurtful and volatile things, but nobody wants to stand up to it. Nobody wants to say anything. Nobody wants to question them and hold them to accountable for some of their actions, let alone the statements that they make. Why is that? Because I don't think that was a good comment from Michael Pactor. I think that was crappy. I even thought about it at one point, actually just like making like a quote tweet and actually replying to him and saying like, yo, like, what is this? Because not just myself in the industry, because I know I don't support that whole MAGA thing that everybody's up in arms about, let alone any of that other political stuff. I'm just out here just doing me. And I know there's a plenty of other people who are just like me who don't care about any of that stuff. Now you're going to throw all of us under that same umbrella or going to try to throw that association out at people. 
Like, I understand it's not an attack on me. I understand that it's not directed at me specifically. I get it. But it's still a generalized statement from someone in the industry that a lot of people look at and that pay attention to, whether you agree or disagree or like or dislike his opinions or whatnot. And it's like, if you want to be part of making our industry better, you can't be doing stuff like that. You can't be making statements like that. You can't be generalizing people like that because then it brings in this whole other element of stuff that I don't think anybody wants to be involved with. I don't think anybody wants to be part of like these crazy like debates and like arguments and stuff. That's the other thing too that, you know, again, I seldom talk about, I hardly ever bring up because again, it's so volatile and it's so like divisive amongst people. But a lot of industry people need to stop bringing in their personal political bias and personal political philosophies and feelings into every single conversation and every single debate and every single uh, thing that goes on in the industry. Look, everybody has their political leanings or whatever else. That's fine. But like, do we really need to make that about everything? Do we really need to use that as like a compass or a barometer or a temperature or some sort of scale to judge whether we associate with certain people or not? Or that we look at people a certain way or not, or we judge people, whether they're a good individual or not. Because to me, I don't think that's right. You know, I've never really been nasty towards anybody in the industry, but just because I don't go out of my way to be hostile or nasty towards people, automatically that means I'm part of the other side. Like, what type of thinking is that? Like, seriously. And I think also the audience, too, is really tired of, like, hearing stuff like that. Or at least getting that vibe from a lot of these people, a lot of these individuals who write for various websites, a lot of these people who associate with some of these other individuals at various outlets and have like large followings and stuff. It's like the ink club, you know, like a whole like click of people that just feel very similar or parrot and peacock the same type of things. I think everybody's really getting sick and tired of that. You know, the majority of people that pay attention to the games industry stuff, they care about games and they want to hear about game talk. And they're, they're there for the debates and the arguments about games. But I think they're tired of, like, seeing all this other stuff uh, judge them and, like, be condescending and obnoxious to them. I've said that a few times where I feel like some of these conversations, like, they really try to judge the audience and judge the people that follow this stuff. So when I look at that comment from Michael Pachter and I see this, I'm like, damn, man. Like, are we really just, like, not going to move past this nonsense? Not going to move past like any of these like crazy things that have lingered for so long. That might be fine for Michael Pactor. That's cool. I'm pretty sure he has his own opinions and I'm pretty sure he doesn't give a damn about my opinions. But I look at that as someone who's been in this industry for now almost 14 years at this point. I'm, I'm at 13 going on 14. And I say to myself, damn, man, like I feel like at times I'm a little bit more of like a professional slash courteous person to everybody else around me than some of these individuals who have been in this a lot longer than I have in various capacities. Like... Feel however you want to feel, but I don't think you need to be an asshole to other people about that. Feel however you want to feel about Twitter Blue. Hell, you don't even have to subscribe to it. I think that him and a lot of other people are just upset because Twitter's changes, they took away their legacy verified status, which there's a whole other thing with that. I think that the majority of people that ended up getting verified on Twitter was only because they were friends with other people or had friends of friends that were able to give them that. It wasn't based on actual merit. It wasn't based on actual, like, you know, portfolio or following or any of that other stuff. Because there's people that I've met that have, like, ridiculous followings that were never verified on Twitter for whatever reason. I've even seen stuff with other people and myself included to get the verified status because of the published articles that they have that they write or that they have stuff written about them. Never once got verified. I know I didn't. <laughs> you know, I applied a couple different times to get my verified status simply because I have stuff published at various outlets and I never got that. So maybe they're just upset because they had that for some time and now it was just taken away from them. Now they have to pay the $8 a month or whatever. That's fine. Feel however you want to feel. But I don't think you need to go around insulting people or being nasty towards people because of that. I just think it's crappy. I think it's it's low class. I think it's Bush League. I think it's like dumb, unprofessional, and honestly unnecessary. You know, especially unnecessary from people like Michael Pactor, who's who tries to give off this like pre presentation or, or this persona of like class or professionalism, especially with whatever he's involved with and his job and all the other things that he gets like involved with. It is what it is. That's just my personal opinion. He doesn't have to like it. A lot of other people don't have to like it, but it is what it is. So with all that being said, let me know some of your guys' thoughts about all this stuff in the comment section down below. I do ask that you guys keep it classy, keep it clean, you know, keep it respectful and stuff because I know these types of things can get very divisive. And again, I don't like talking about this stuff when it comes to gaming stuff because I just like to focus on games themselves or the discussions around specific games or gaming topics. 
And this type of thing is still kind of a little bit outside that realm, even though it's parallel to it. But still, it's relevant right now from stuff that I have, I've observed in various different places and seeing it from various different people. But let me know some of your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. Of course, as always, make sure you leave a like on this episode, you know, the video of this podcast. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I have new videos that have been going up lately and a lot of YouTube shorts. Like I told you guys, I've been posting up a lot of YouTube shorts that have been doing pretty well. They've been getting out there. I'm hoping that same level of traffic comes to videos like this and also to my other videos like my recent review of Star Wars. Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. If you guys haven't watched that, definitely check it out. I've been in a big Star Wars mood because we have Star Wars Jedi Survivor coming out very, very soon. At the time I'm recording this, it's coming out later in the week on Friday. I cannot wait. I got my game on reserve. I'm ready to go, baby. Now, the other thing, too, I should mention before I go, I am going to be at Fighter Fest that's going on in Fort Lauderdale later this week, which I believe is the same day that Jedi Survivor comes out. It's being run and uh, hosted by Flynn's Arcade Gaming and more, my sponsor here on the channel. They've invited me to go check it out for all of you guys. There's going to be a lot of stuff there. There's going to be a cosplay contest. There's going to be a whole bunch of gaming tournaments, including Smash Brothers, Guilty Gear, I think Street Fighter and Tekken as well. They have a whole bunch of promotional stuff that shows the different tournaments and things like that. They're going to have food trucks. They're going to have free popcorn. They're going to have a whole bunch of stuff that you guys need to check out when you guys get a chance. I'll be out there. I'll probably be shooting some TikTok videos. Maybe I'll get a little bit of footage if I can of all the festivities, but I'm going there to hang out with everybody. So if you're around, you're in the area, you want to check out a cool event, it's free to attend. Come check it out. Come say hi. Come say what's up. I'll be posting stuff up online when I'm out there. So anyway, with all that being said, I will talk to all of you guys again very soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody.